This episode is about minutes 76 through 80 of The Empire Strikes Back with returning guest Jeremy Saruk. Hello there, and welcome to Star Wars Music Minute, where we celebrate the music and sound of Star Wars five cinematic minutes at a time. I'm Chrysanthi Tan, but you can call me Xanthi, and today is all about minutes 76 through 80 of The Empire Strikes Back, in which Han and Leia and Chewie and the, you know, 3PO, I can't forget 3PO, um, land on Cloud City, but there's no one there to greet them. And uh, we also have a little scene with Luke and Yoda on Dagobah. And I'm really excited for the set of minutes because there's a really great violin part. So not that that's like a main part that I should shout out for what happens in these five minutes, but it's a really important part that happens in these five minutes. So um, yeah, I'm really happy to have, I think for the third time, uh, Jeremy Sarek back, uh, composer, person who makes clappy, ta- tappy music. Uh, what was, I forgot what your, uh, what your tagline was that I, I no, it, came up for you. you. you just, yeah. You described it as make click, clicky, tappy things, make music or something like that. Yeah. I was trying to explain to someone what Jeremy does and I, yeah, I said that. So, um, yeah, Jeremy is, uh, I'm welcome back to the show. Thank you. This, this is my third time on this show. So. Yes. Okay. Cool. I figured. Um, we have some. We have a lot of things to analyze and comment on, and there is one spot where th- there is a an interesting sound that comes up that I guess we can call on audience members to weigh in on what you think that sound, the source of that sound is. Because spoiler, the two of us disagree, or we hear different things there. Um, yeah, was that a? I think I gave, I threw out enough enough teasers um, for people to mm-hmm. <laughs> listen to the rest of this episode. Um, wow, uh, is there anything that stands out to you before we start just getting into the minutes? Like, is there anything that stands out to you about this chunk in particular, in the context of the film? Um, I think this is a really interesting uh, part of the film. Um, I put it, I would describe it as like the transition to the third act. Right. This is where we're coming out of the asteroid field. We're coming out of the Dagobah train sequence. We're about to enter Cloud City. And there's all these emotional shifts that happen during these minutes of the film. And I think the music captures quite a bit of it. Uh, When I started out, you know, when you gave me these five minutes, I didn't know what to expect. I hadn't really paid a lot of attention of detail to the music. And I was surprised that just how much content there is there, but how much of it is driven by the narrative shifts that happen. Mm. Uh, You know, I kind of, I feel similarly, other than the fact that I'm doing this podcast, like prior to doing this podcast, I think, I think everything on Cloud City is, it, the whole, not to, not to lean too heavily into this analogy, but, but this metaphor, but it all, it all feels kind of like a dream. Um, and it sounds kind of like a dream in many ways. Like I, for some reason, cloud city stuff just has flown right over my head in the past. And it might also be because a a lot of that material does not recur throughout the saga. Mm. So it's kind of, um, compartmentalized to this film, but yeah, it is quite different from things that came before it. Yes. (laughs) And, um, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, I will also say that the Cloud City moments have, I think, some of the first music in Star Wars that to me sounds sci fi y. But uh, yeah, I'll tell you. Like, I'll tell you when we get okay. there. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so now we're just going to start listening to the minutes. And of course, interrupt me whenever. It's good to be interrupted, if anything, because sure. copyright. Likes when you talk, it's, it's easier when you talk over stuff uh, to not get flagged. <laughs> the rest of the garbage. Then what? Then we gotta find a safe port somewhere around here. So there's there's a the lot ideas. going on nice. with the sound design here. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> well, first of all, I, I, I like the, the opening line with uh, the rest of the garbage. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, we start out, there's no music here. And so you just have regular dialogue and the sound effects, but there's actually quite a bit going on with the sound effects here um, to, to fill in that space inside the Falcon, to make it seem realistic. 
Uh, I, I hear there's some ambient, you know, like low hum, but then I hear this like beep, beep, mm -hmm. like alarm of something going off. Um, I don't know if you want to go back and see yeah. if you can find that. Yeah, I, I definitely hear the beep. Get the rest of the garbage. Then what? Then we gotta find a safe port somewhere around here. Beep. There, that was the beep. beep. Yeah. <laughs> and and there's you also heard there is a like a sweep down of just you. I did hear that. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So these these are all Oh wait, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say these are all, you know, just sound effects to make it feel like there's a lot going on. Yeah. Um maybe this is should we listen to the voice removed? part the oh, voice removed track sure let, let me uh, back up for a minute here so um you sent me the just the clip with the regular audio mm -hmm. i brought it into a piece of software that does audio analysis and asked it to you know remove the voice um using a, a more complicated algorithm than just like stereo phase cancellation and while the algorithm was designed to remove vocals from like a pop song or something like that, it actually did a pretty good job of this. Mm. So it's interesting, like the job that it did, it, it's interesting what it, what it, the other things that it took out as well. Um, sure. It was it using, um, what program did you use for? I used, um, this is a uh, Spectra Layers Pro from Steinberg. Oh, okay. So it's one of it's one of their products that is not Dorico. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, right. but yeah, it's um, that's an inside joke. Uh, but yeah, it actually has some pretty uh, good spectral visualization and spectral editing tools. It's like if a waveform editor was also developed uh, at, with Photoshop capabilities. Yeah. So. Yeah, Adobe Audition has something like that too, but I, but I, you, it shows you like a the spectra, like the spectral display, and then you can right. go in with like a brush or whatever, exactly, and kind of brush, yeah, you kind of brush out the, the frequencies <laughs> that you don't want. So, so okay, so did you tell it to remove the voice, or did you go in with a brush and pick like frequencies? It would it would take way too long to do manually. So there's yep. this. I'm looking at it. Um, the, there is oh. It's something called unmix stems. Oh, okay. And so you go in there and it says, well, how, you know, what do you want for the vocals, piano, drum, bass, and other? And then you can select which of those you want to toggle on and off. Um, and it basically is taking the information that it has and trying to separate it out into those four basic buckets. So like I said, it's designed for music. It's not designed for this kind of work, but mm -hmm. it actually, you know, does pretty well. Nice. Okay. Well, now with that intro, I'm going to play just the beginning of this set of minutes with the voice kind of removed from that, pro with that program. Is that more, is that voices? Yes. The, okay. It, okay. <laughs> The, the, the lower register of Han's voice is in the same uh, range of frequencies as that background hum, and the software just can't separate them. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> the beep is interesting because it's not like a... because the pitch strays on it right and i think the reason the pitch strays is it probably was made on an analog synth uh which don't uh especially at that time period don't have uh great pitch stability so i know for for the r2 effects they used um an analog synth and it might be the same unit i believe it was an arp 2600 Arp yeah yeah that makes sense <laughs> Maybe they did the beeps the same way with, as R2 with the kind of vocalizing them and pressing pressing <laughs> buttons. Um, cool. Okay. 
now I'm going to switch back to the regular version and we can just continue listening a little bit further. <laughs> sure. No. Oh, wait. This is interesting. Lando. Lando system? <laughs> Lando's not a system. He's a man. Lando Calrissian. He's a card player, gambler, scoundrel. You'd like him. Nice. Best, but it's pretty far, but I think we can make it. Does Leia say nice in response to that? Yes, she does. Okay, that's what go, I... Go, go back. I'm pretty sure that's what she says. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, too, but it, it's so kind of soft. Gambler. Scoundrel, you'd like him. Nice. Best been as pretty. Nice. <laughs> that feels. <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, that feels like more modern humor to me. Um, like because it's sarcastic a little bit. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's funny. It's really funny. <laughs> um, you'd like him. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, and then he. Just Why is there more dialogue like that? <laughs> I, I don't. Well, I don't know. Well. Well, real people talk that way, right? Yeah, though I can imagine. Like it's not forced humor. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think if someone, if I were in this conversation, <laughs> um, scoundrel, you'd like him. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Would Han keep talking there? I guess. I mean, if he, I guess they probably have, they, okay. The fact that Han doesn't make a big deal out of that kind of, makes me assume that they've been talking this way for a long time. Right. This whole trip. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do I do like the dialogue, and the, I do like their delivery here. It feels so different. It feel, Clearly there's more intimacy here because their dialogue, I feel, I feel more vulnerability in it, and I feel like different mm, notes are being tapped or something i don't know interesting yeah. yeah i don't know but you can definitely tell that uh to your point of han doesn't really react to that shows you know a level of uh connection there yeah yeah it's very casual yeah um pretty far but i think we can make it mining colony yeah, you can hear that well da 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 wait what in, in the background of one of the sound effects you hear is like da 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 another one of those alarms going off. And it's just like this alternation of two notes. Oh. I think we can make it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It feels like it's on a main one, but it keeps slipping. Uh, I don't know what it, what, in your experience, it, what do you think that sound is? Um, I, I hear it as like two separate pitches that are just alternating. But it, it's somewhat random um, in terms of the length. Mm. It, it's almost like two eighth notes, but it really reminds me of like a Morse code signal you'd be getting oh, or something okay. like that. Da, 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 da. Morse code doesn't actually use two different pitches, but that was the first thing that came to my mind when oh, I heard okay. that. It's like, oh, it's some sort of communication signal or something. But mm. yeah, I, I think it's probably just you know, something connected uh, to, you know, just alternate between those two pitches uh, with some timing variation. Is it something speaking binary? Is that what that would sound like? It could be. It, it could be. I mean, if you want to make binary sound that way, you sure could. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I mean, that, that is one way you could do it is you could say, uh, okay, I have a noise signal. When the noise is above this threshold, play this pitch. And when it's mm -hmm. below that, play this other pitch. Mm -hmm. You know, it could also sound like, like a, yeah, but it could also sound like a, um, yeah, I was going to say like, um, you know, a scientific instrument or something like that. What's a scientific you know, instrument? Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Like a, a Geiger counter. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. A, a Geiger counter would be, uh, something like that. So. <laughs> cool. Um. Yeah, I like the idea of that. Okay, let's continue. Sure. Mining colony? Yeah, Tabana gas mine. Lando conned somebody out of it. We go back a long way, Lando and me. This line, right here. Can you trust him? No. <laughs> Can you trust him? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> There's like an honesty in that. Um, 
he's being like less defensive. He's sort of like, I don't know, the way he says no is, it, it's, it's, it just different. It's like different than, I, than the Han who, than how Han would have said that in at least A New Hope. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not like declarative. It's more like a, almost a question, almost. You trust him? N no. Yeah, like he's not already preparing for like them to get at each other's throats. Right. Um, which is kind of a nice um, relief in the conversation to not kind of be witnessing a battle at all times. Um, yeah, I like that moment. Also, I have to say, solo the events of Solo, a Star Wars story. This is the part. This if if ever there is a place where that film will pay off, it is. It is starting now. <laughs> Do you trust him? No. He's got no love for the Empire. I can tell you that. Here we go, Chewie. Stand by. Detach. Okay. <laughs> so. We, we heard a noise and then we heard a scrape and we heard all this detached sound. Yeah. And the music enters when that scrape is coming in. So it's kind of like a crossfade. So you don't notice the music entrance as much. Yeah. It's like after he says stand by and kind of like as he's saying detach. Right. Okay. This is the beginning of... You have your moments. <laughs> Okay, there this it is, is. The, well, okay, <laughs> this, we, we're, we're already there. We're already there. We're at the place where we're going to, like, what is that, like, little, what is that note that is happening there? Well, first, let me say, this is the start of the Q8M2, City in the Clouds. Um, let's go back into it so that we can hear the, what, what Jeremy, what I know that you think you hear it as an errant horn note. You hear it as like a wrong entrance. It, yeah. Okay. And right here. You have your moments. So then what do you think the second time it does that is? Yeah. Go back. I think, when, when's okay, the second time? Let me just time? say, I yeah. think it's just creaking, like a, the it creak of something. I don't think it's a wrong horn entrance, though that would be hilarious if that were kept. That would be really funny and not too out of, not too out of the realm of possibility for this era. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, can you uh, play that again? Let's yeah. Listen to that. Your moments. Two. How many of them? Hmm. The second time, it definitely sounds more like a mechanical, you know, sound. So it's just, it's weird because it really sits in that musical range and kind of stands out a little bit. Like it sits in the range that a horn could play. Right. Let's. It's. Well, that. Well, that was that was a screech. That's beautiful yes. music. Here we go, Chewie. Stand by. Detach. That's somewhere between... It's like between a C and a C sharp. Right. Which, if that were a wrong note, that would be in the wrong key. It would be like a very wrong note. <laughs> like, it would right. just be straight up a wrong note. Yeah, it's it's strange. I think part of the reason why I'm hearing it as a horn is just the the envelope of that sound. It has a it doesn't yeah. have a sharp attack. So do you want to and, explain envelope? Oh, sure. So when you have a sound, um, you it the way in which a sound is shaped over time. So you have the attack phase, which is going from nothing to full volume. And then, you know, decays down to a sustained volume, which is what you usually hear it at. And then it'll uh, fall off at the end after the note's being held. Um, so that initial burst of energy at the beginning, if it's like, you know, 
uh, piano has a relatively strong attack at the beginning. Percussion instrument is going to have a relatively strong attack. Um, with wind instruments, you can have a much, uh, you know, slower attack. So it kind of like goes Wah, as opposed to mm -hmm. over time. And that's kind of what I'm hearing here is that more of that, that creeping in that Wah type of attack. And French horn is very common. So I think my brain is saying that envelope, you know, that, that particular attack plus where that's lying in the frequency range is having, there you go, uh, is having my brain say that's a French horn. It's interesting how <laughs> the brain CSC. fills in gaps like that. That's, that, yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's one of the marvels of human perception. <laughs> one of the big yeah, you, parts, pieces of, of sound that is important to talk about beyond what is just, you know, there's, there's what's on paper and what is played, and then there's what people hear. They're all different things. Right. Do you want, do you want to go over uh, the ADSR that oh, yeah. you pulled up, that envelope? Yeah. I guess that would be a better way to explain things. Okay. So this is, this is what Jeremy was just explaining. This is like, right. I mean, this is a thing that musicians, especially people who are in music production or work with synths or, or whatever, will encounter at some point. Um, yeah. I mean, what you described the attack it, is what A stands for. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be right. obviously this part. Um, and if you were to make the, that attack shorter, like you were saying, like, I don't know, that's something like, you know, <laughs> hitting, a, hitting, hitting a mallet instrument or something. Um, the right. attack, okay, this is time, this axis. This axis is time. Yes. So if you were to make the attack shorter, um, it would, the envelope would look, <laughs> just, you, you would move that pink thing here. It would just be steeper. Um, and a sound that has a long kind of onset, sort of like a horn has sort of a, it takes a while to, like in acoustic land, we would say like, um, that note takes a while to speak. Um, exactly. Yeah, you could have. It might not, you know, really speak until later. Um, it, it would take a longer time to speak. Um, but yeah, attack isn't the only parameter that was probably um, tipping you off to it feeling like a horn. But just like in general, the whole envelope, which is what this is called, is just kind of remind. <laughs> just kind of, I, I agree. Like the envelope is reminiscent of horn. Decay, sustain, right. release. Um, this is actually a good infographic, I have to say. Um, yeah, I like it. Yeah. Um, okay. I think that's a, a good enough cursory explanation. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we could talk a lot about the acoustics and perception here, but I don't want to take yes, up as all we have the time. In other, form, in other, in other <laughs> instances. Yeah. Um, I think it, I think. I would like to, okay, I'm putting a case, um, I'm putting it, I'm going to put in my case for it being a creek now. <laughs> okay. I'll present my I, case. I, <laughs> I, I am leaning more towards that now that I hear, you know, because I didn't hear it the second time and now that I'm hearing it in a uh, fresh context, you know, because I was so heavily focused on the music there that of course this must be a musical instrument. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's understandable. Um, so the way that I will, the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play where this corresponds to in the soundtrack. So this would be the track Imperial Starfleet Deployed or City in the Clouds. And it's, this part is about at 115 of that track. Um, we'll get into a little bit. So this is where the horn note would have been. But it's pretty clean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it, but yeah, it is interesting. I, I could have been, if I heard it there, I would have, I, before I went and checked, I was not, I was 90, I was like 80% sure that 
it was a creak, but I still, because the envelope did sound reminiscent of a horn, I reserved the 20% of like, I might be wrong. Let me check. So mm-hmm. yeah. Um, that I, I want to just call attention to that string line, that ascending string line there. Um, it's so, uh, it's, it's, it sounds so like floating through space to me. Um, because it's for, it's so slow. It's ascending. It's slow, um, which is what floating in space conjures for me. Is slowness. Um, mm. Yeah, I just like that moment. And it it kind of is like the strings, the violins are um, playing this pattern um, just three times in a row, which is but. Uh, going up a step or, or whatever. And it, and basically it's just, it's a whole, <laughs> the two notes are separated by a whole step. And then, um, is this right? Um, yeah, it's very, it's very simple, but not, you know, not entirely simple. It's like, um, you know, there's so there's some interesting harmony happening there, but it's it it feels subtle. I think is what I'm is maybe what I'm trying to say. It feels subtle. It feels subtle because um, there aren't very many instruments playing like reinforcing root notes or anything like that. It's right. sort of like and the first chord itself is kind of open sounding. It's um, yeah. Do do you want to, um, do you want to describe what you mean by open sound? Yeah. So. <laughs> So the first chord, for, well, let me play it again first. Um, and chord just meaning like the vertical intersection of what notes are playing at that same time. There. D. So that's a G, C, and D. And... The basis of like Western functional harmony is something called triads, which is um, three note chords that are separated, where each note is separated by a third. So, and it always has to be that way. They're like, it, if you were to write it out in notation, it's always it's it's the snowman thing. Um, it's basically snowmen, snow 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 people. Um, because separated by thirds, so if you go line into space, it's like either three spaces in a row or three lines in a row. But anyway, um, this is not a triad because even though there are three notes, this is a triad because one, okay, because this is a third and this is a third. Stacked thirds is maybe a better way to describe it. Instead, this is a, a second. We have a fifth and a second. And... I don't know, Jeremy, help me out here. What do I mean by open? I know what it is, but I'm not sure what how to best explain that. So I think what you're hearing in this particular chord, um, yeah. so if it's a C, a D, and a G, I would analyze that as a C sus two chord, if we put the C on as yeah. the bottom note. Um, and what the interval between the C and the G is a fifth, and that's what we call an open interval because that's there's what, space in between those. There we go. <laughs> and then the D to the G is a fourth, which is also an open interval, mm-hmm. right? Because a fourth notes, and a fifth are kind of you could fit notes the in between, thing. yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and yes, the fourth and fifth are inversions of each other. They are somehow the same, but yeah. that's why I think you're hearing is you don't have that third interval at all like you were saying that's so common in uh a lot of music so it gives it it very ungrounded sense in a way it's i think what it what it is is the third is what the third is what defines what a triad is if you don't have a third you can't definitively say like in like star wars uses open fifths open chords a lot and it like fifths you know it's you can't definitively say whether this is a major or minor because you simply don't have a third because this you could make it minor or major the third defines 
the triad. So without having a third, it's it's not defined. You can't say for sure what it is. Right. Exactly. Um, and perhaps that's um, gives a double meaning to like the way that cello, viola, and violin strings are tuned. Is there's a fifth in between them, and we call these like open strings because you're not fingering any notes. But if you're just going like those are open fifths. And so there's like a little double meaning, uh, you know, there's a little double meaning. Open because they're just open strings, but they're actually also open fifths in the harmony sense of the, right. of the term as well. Yeah. Um, okay. But uh, the notes that you played here, because we've talked a lot about the harmony, but you have this ascending line and it's actually just a G minor scale. Mm. Right? You mean but the... Yeah. G, da, 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 da. But it never reaches that top G. Well, it goes. It falls down. Right. And though the melody is forming a G minor scale, at least like Aeolian or, or whatever, just like a natural G minor right. scale because in minor, the, there's a few different ways to finish at the top. But um, the second violins are kind of playing a, uh, they're playing, they're holding, they're suspending, um, they're sustaining notes and sometimes like suspending the chord um, underneath it. So the whole thing in general is, um, let's see, first they're playing. My finger slipped. <laughs> so that's kind of like a D major. But then it's like. You know. Mm -hmm. Sus minor two. Sus flat two. But not really. It's just going up. It's still just going up. And then it, it kind of holds the D major through this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's interesting that you have that clash of those two notes because that mirroring what you said earlier about the harmonic ambiguity of the first chord is neither major nor minor, and now this chord is yeah. both major and minor. Right. Because we have both the major third and the minor third. Exactly. So you yeah. get a lot of tension. So first it's just major. Because this goes against this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, let's keep going. Should I play from the, what do you think? Should I, I should play, I'll play from the minutes. Okay. Okay. Nope, further along. I think I missed the transition. Ugh. I think you. Here we go. You have your moments. Yeah. Not many of them, but you do have them. Now we're in the Han and Leia theme, of course. Yep. It's um. This theme is orchestrated so interestingly throughout this throughout this movie. Um, that clarinet, like yeah, <laughs> filigree, um, is uh, it's almost like onomatopoeic um, representation of like butterfly, like stomach flutters or something. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, that's a that's a interesting interpretation of that. I didn't really think about like what that m meant. I just heard that as like filling in to try to you know do something in that space but yeah oh for sure i mean it's that it cer certainly serves that purpose um but just to me that's what it, it signals or that's what it evokes um for me uh this theme gets complicated here it, it 
it doesn't stay put in, in one ar uh, around one tonal center. It kind of like it starts down here. It starts in G, so. And then it's, and then it's, well, we'll hear it in a second. Okay. You have your moments. Not many of them, but you do have them. Love that clarinet part. And then. Keeps going up. But it repeats that last one several times, which is a very tense one. You know? We have this minor second. It's minor third, it's very cramped. Um, what do you make of this? Um, yeah, I, it is a very cramped interval. And I think the, the interesting thing here isn't so much the melody as what's going on rhythmically. Because if you oh. listen, there's a little bit of like, it goes a little fast and then it goes a little slow and then mm. it goes a little fast and then it goes a little slow. So if you back up So you mean the tempo, there, not the rhythm? Uh, I, I think it's the actual rhythm, like the meter. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, let's, so let's you, go back. Maybe this would be actually yeah. a good chance to go back to the soundtrack because there's so many ship loudy, loud stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Here we go. That's a good crescendo. Two, three, mm. and four, and... Oh. Oh, interesting. It doesn't... Am I yeah. imagining things, or... Are there two... It, are those bars repeated in the film, and they're not in They the, are repeated. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so explain the rhythm thing. So when we have this, um, now the Han and Leia melody is when we first hear it, it's in four, right? Da, 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 da. But because there's this tension building, we've been hearing it in three. Bum, 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 bum. So it seems faster. Yeah, but then you right mean, there, in right, these minutes, it's in three. But you're saying be yes. prior in the film. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Yes. But then right where you stopped, we could hear mm -hmm. it in four again. Uh, da, 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 da. So it's yeah. like he's playing with the, the rhythm here. And I wonder if how much of that is driven by the, um, you know, sense of creating tension and how much of that is driven by matching the action on screen to get it to fit so that when we get to the next piece of music, that lands at the correct time. Do you know why um, two bars were added in the film? I don't. Or is this, a, is this just a special edition change? That's a great question. I don't know. I haven't compared. I only listened to the music that you sent. <laughs> okay. If anyone, I know that there are some people who listen to the show who um, always know what's going on. So I will look out for <laughs> comments <laughs> about how, um, I'm sort of missing something or, you know, just, uh, I want to be, yeah. I, yeah, just show me the light to someone. Um, I will, you. I will say though that this cut, mm -hmm. uh, to the next piece of music, it, it sounds like a very sharp cut to me. And when I looked at the spectrogram, there does appear to be a very sharp cut. So I wonder if there was an edit uh, to match the film compared to the original recording. Yeah, so maybe this wasn't the best cue to go to the soundtrack for. Let's go back to the, maybe, okay. okay. Let's 
what do you think? Voice removed version or? We can try that. Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait, let me make sure that I'm in the right time area. Okay, cool. Extra. Tell me what we just heard. Where's the cut? So right there, the violins are da 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 da, and then it just stops. You mean it's right? after the whole? It's after all the dee 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 dee. It's after all that. It's not in the middle of it. Right, it's after oh, all. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, just making sure. Um, I, yeah, okay, that, yeah. But it, it, but when you said, well, on the soundtrack, though, you have two measures, but in this film, you have four measures, and the fact that right after that, there's this sharp, what I hear is a sharp cut, suggests that those could thing. have been added, right? Yeah. I have to say that I, I like the addition. <laughs> I like, even though I'm. I think this was probably because of an addition of a shot or something. Um, I like how that really tense um, figure repeats. I, I like the version where it repeats, where it it's played four times yeah. instead of two. I think it, yeah, I, I like that. It's, um, let's see. So it's sorry. It's really like up here, and it's like like it's. It would be one of those. Um, I don't want to say it's like an effortful thing to play, but it, it it has a very it has kind of a piercing quality to it has a kind of a piercing quality to it, and um, it almost sounds like a distress call to me, or it sounds right. like distress to me. Um, let's maybe, I know that you have a picture of, I know that you have a screenshot of the spectrogram, um, yes. being cut off. So let me show that. Um, yes, Jeremy prepared, um, snapshots of the spectrogram so we can see that and you can see the sharp cut in the spectrogram. Right, that's so that, that's what, because when the violin, I'm not hearing a reverb tail on it. So it just yeah. like really cuts off in a very unnatural way to me. Yeah. And you can kind of see that the, the top of the spectrogram, all of a sudden it becomes black. So there's no audio in that frequency space. Yeah, which is the upper, which is, yeah, higher frequencies. Mm -hmm. And I would think that's pretty difficult to do with a an orchestra. To just yeah. have all the violins just stop right there. <laughs> yeah, because just just with one person, there's such a long reverb tail. <laughs> exactly. Um, and that's again that goes back to the to the envelope. It goes back to the envelope. This R at the end is the reverb tail. See, and as we mm -hmm. can clearly see here, there is no tail. It's just a cliff. Yep. Um. Nice. All right. Shall we keep playing? Well, sure. Obviously, right here, we're getting this is the Boba Fett motif. Okay, let's go a couple octaves lower. <laughs> and um, that would be in a much lower range than the violins were previously playing. So it is a pretty uh, steep cliff. Yes, it's there. very dramatic. All right. Um, R2. We have switched to Dagobah, obviously. There was Yoda's oh, theme. Man. Yoda's theme. Yeah, in the 
piccolo in the mm-hmm. way high register. You can hear that. Da, 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 da. No, I think I passed it. Yeah. It's so yeah. soft. It's incredibly soft. Going. <laughs> it's kind of piercing when I play it on the on this keyboard, but um, yeah, I, Yoda's theme pops up in not unexpected, but. It pops up all over the second half of this film in little Easter eggy <laughs> types of places. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, this is a good example. I, I think this instance is really dialogue driven because it happens right before Yoda says through the force or it starts, you know, like just as he's saying through the force. So it's like Yoda says force, but in Yoda's theme. Mm, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I love how, um, like, sort of while Yoda's theme is is going on, the the strings are doing kind of something that they've been doing throughout this str- throughout this film to almost symbolize the the force or moving things mm-hmm. with the force which is that you know um, slow at least okay at least when the force is being used slowly and meditatively um it's this slow gliding up like this ascension um you know concentration feeling the force flow through you and it's just a very it's almost like a methodical a methodical slide up because we've had a lot of, of slides like Glissando. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of slides in various places in this film. And of course in the asteroid field, we have lots of slides down, especially and they're very fast. And we also hear fast slides up in other places. And we also hear fast or we also hear slow slides that we've talked about before, but often in a way that is like, a very large leap from the bottom note to the top note or going to a place where it's almost uh, indiscernible what the pitch is. And that has often been associated with like the emperor or very creepy, scary things. You know, this thing, this type of... We've had lots of that, but here it's like, it's measured. It's just, it's going like... Something like that. Like it's step by step, but sliding between the steps. Um, Right. And I I think here in this scene, it's also very literal because the strings are going up at the same time that R2 and the other objects are going up as well. So it's a a little bit Mickey Mouse. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Which I would say the force is, at least on Dagobah during this training, the force is Mickey Mouse quite a bit. Like when things topple or when, you know, when things are kind of rising, which I feel is, um, which I, I really like. Um, and I try to imagine (laughs) what it would be like to watch this film for the first time after only having watched Star Wars, A New Hope and before all the other Star Wars media, um, was out yet. I, I can imagine people watching this film in 1980 are probably, they're learning what, this is like their crash course on the force. You know, they've seen it introduced in A New Hope, but still, you know, it wasn't, it's not like today where we have so many ideas of what the force is. We have so many different books and films and shows that we can point to examples of the force being used in certain ways. Like now everyone knows, what everyone has their own concept of the force, um, which is great. But here it's like the film is really teaching everyone what, the force is. Um, so it's helpful to have the musical, um, assistance, I guess. Yeah. And I think it's, 
it, it's just at the right level where it's not overdone. Like if I didn't point it out to someone, they probably wouldn't even know that there was this, the music matching the action on screen because it's not in your face. It's very background. It's very subtle, like you said. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Concentrate. Feel the force. The force. Methodical. Yes. Gliding up. It's like a very slow shepherd's dog. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes. Through the force. Things Here we go. Force theme. There's the force theme. Yep. The future, the past, old friends long gone. Hot. Oh, uh, yeah. You can hear the force theme. It kind of doesn't end right. Right. Which corresponds to, you know, Luke seeing something or feeling something in the force. Um, yeah. Any thoughts before we move on? I mean, um, it, it's a very, um, that, that is in contrast to what we were just talking about. That is uh, a very, you know, forward musical moment where you want the audience to notice that something's wrong. So you give them a theme that they've heard a number of times. And then, like you said, it ends in a strange way. The notes are not what you're expecting. And the entire mood just shifts so quickly uh, from there. It starts out being very ethereal, you know, uh, like the force. And then you have, you know, this, uh, you know, it says old friends long gone. And it changes from, you know, into this minor dissonance, and it just doesn't feel right. And so you want the audience to have that unsettled feeling a little bit. Yeah, it's almost like, um, I guess, bringing up like a beloved theme that is, or a well frequently used theme that the audience will definitely have caught on to by now. Um, it's an opportunity to either just needle drop it and play it as people expect, which when it starts out, it's almost like a reward you know, for the audience, like, oh, there's the theme, you know, you know, which I think, you know, is just a natural thing to feel when a theme that you recognize comes on. You, like, you kind of have that reward. Um, but it's an opportunity to show with the music that something is wrong. And, and it's a bigger opportunity when it's already a theme that people know because people can tell more quickly you know, that there's intentionally something different happening. Exactly. Um, all right. Leia! <laughs> control, control, you must bring control. And after that whole ascending... So, oh, go ahead. Yeah. There you go. You go okay, first. after that whole ascending thing, we have now, like, almost the... Boom, like it plops down onto a, a low note. Like right, we've, gone, so, we've climbed all the way up methodically, we've gotten so high, and now we're just on the lowest cello open C string. Um, so there's a lot going on here that I like. Can we just back up for a second to mm -hmm. where Luke says Han? Yeah. In this scene. Han? Leia! Did you hear that? Hear what? I hear right a lot after of he says Han, yeah. <laughs> in the music, this might be this might be a good uh, time to use to go to the, the soundtrack without dial. Good yeah, go to the soundtrack would even be best. Um, very faintly, you can hear the horns or some sort of brass that is just da, 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 and it recalls that Boba Fett moment. Mm. And I'm going to call this the the. Um, Boba Fett Cloud City, you know, building motif, because if you listen really closely, you'll hear that a lot in the rest of this uh, section, Definitely. not just on Dagobah, but D yeah. it's right there in the background and it has to be deliberate because he says Han and da, 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 da. Yeah. Because he's, it's, yeah, he's seeing so. a vision of Cloud City. I need to go. F Wait. No, I need to go back a little bit. Okay. 
There. Yeah. Like a muted trumpet. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, it's, that's a uh, sextuplet that re- the repeating sextuplets are like, well, I guess we, I've already said that something was a warning, like a warning call. Um, but this is like mm-hmm. a warning call, <laughs> but it's, but I like, but it, it but it's so faint because yes. it's in a vision. Like it's, it's kind of like in the, it's, it's distant. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's listen to that again. Yeah, it just goes down. Yeah. And the harp is going like uh, again. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um yes. we should you should definitely score a film just like that. Just Thank use you. I think so. <laughs> um, the uh so we we have that Mickey Mouse thing again where the music's going down and the action on screen things are falling down, literally. Yes. As well exactly. as the downward emotional shift. So everything is just down. Yes. But, um, um the one thing that I like here is uh, this has to be intentional. I can't see any reason that it couldn't be, because if we go back to the film, mm-hmm. you have that those dun. Dun, 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 ah. Uh, you have this this space, right? So it's not like da 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 da. It's dun dun dun, bong. And in that space, Yoda says, "Hmm." Mm-hmm. It's like the music stopped just so you could hear Yoda very clearly. Yeah, like leave space. Uh, At, yeah, but it's like imperfect rhythmic time. So they time this right around getting that on that beat. Yeah, that makes sense. So this must have been. So John Williams must have had the, a pretty, uh, like a cut that didn't have a change here, um, like so he could have scored it, to um, the cut that he had. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, let's hear that. Let's hear that, so yeah. we can hear the hmm. Leia! Control, control, you must be in control. Yep. I saw... I saw City in the Clouds. Hmm. When did you have there? There's Yoda's theme Yoda's again. Yoda's theme, yeah. It is the future you see. Of string harmonics that put them way up there and very quiet. Yeah, artificial harmonics, no less. Um, it's the artificial harmonics, which sound very far away. They're also like extremely soft. Well, although it's not easy to play artificial harmonics super loudly uh, to begin right. with. Um, it kind of goes with the distant nature of of what's going on. It's, and the fact that it's like in the class, it's like the whole thing is shrouded in something. Right. Yeah, no, that, great point. Um, so it's. Artificial harmonics have this really eerie um, quality to them because they're not like clean, natural harmonics where it's like it's so resonant. Like I don't know, those are so they have such a cleanliness to them. I feel like um, right. and a, and a sharper atta- and a shorter attack. Um, artificial harmonics have this glassiness that natural harmonics don't. And they're, it's also harder to make them speak going back to the envelope. Um, right. It's easy to miss one because you have to sort of almost perfectly finger two different notes at the same time. Um, the f- but yeah, uh, <laughs> artificial harmonics. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah. Good. Consult your uh, local orchestration text for more information <laughs> on artificial yeah. harmonics. Um, I have explained I have explained them on a pr- past episode, so people might remember might remember that. I think it was episode nine with Samantha Tripp. Dagobah Piccolo Workout was the name of that episode. Yes, we talked about artificial harmonics. So go back there and look at the timestamp if you want to see the sort of notation that I put up. All right. Um, <laughs> let's continue listening. Okay. Future. Will they die? Difficult to see. Always in motion is the future. That feels like a so, sharp cut. <laughs> so Yoda's theme has been going on. It hits a ba, 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 right. So it has that highest note and then it comes down a step. And the highest note is Yoda looks up, right? And then the the next note, the resolution is when Luke turns around. So there's that little, even just, even though it's a half step, because of what's matching the action on screen, it's really, it says a lot. Yeah, you're talking about the, that's the highest note and then. Yep. (laughs) Uh, I need to try that again. There we go. That's probably how it's done. Uh, third, <laughs> in fourth or fifth position. Okay. Um, yeah, I see what I see. What you're saying. Um, yeah, not not that it's Mickey Mouse. It's just it just matches the fray. It just matches the the picture in a way. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also, I have to say, like. We have pulled out all the stops here in terms of the magical instruments that one could put on screen. Or I think if one were to make a complicated Venn diagram of the different types of magic to evoke and the different instruments that are associated with those, I feel like there, I, I, now I want to make this Venn diagram. I feel like there is <laughs> like, um, well, let me ask you for, first, what instruments okay. would you put in like a magical Venn diagram of magical instruments? <laughs> Um, number one instrument I'd put in is celeste. Absolutely. That automatically just for some reason, uh, captures, um, you know, magic. We can go back to, um, Nutcracker Suite as an example Mm -hmm. of where that is coming from. Uh, we hear it here. I believe we hear it in ET. We, it's the main instrument in the Harry Potter opening theme. Yep. So it's been associated with magic for a long time. Um, that would be my first go-to instrument. Yeah, I would agree. I think there's also harp. Mm-hmm. I'd also say glockenspiel. Okay. Maybe vibraphone. I mean, these are all the bangy percussion yeah. instruments that have the sparkle sparkle kind of sound Um, right yeah vibraphone or if i was i personally would like would do bowed vibraphone uh yeah that would be another one Mm -hmm. okay i would also say theremin yeah theremin is but like different these don't all have to be the same in the same collection of of magical stuff because not all of them will fit here um even some of them are more like an extroverted magic <laughs> uh, and, well okay and then i th- i would say like the sort of the violin either artificial harmonics or like v- violin like high tremolos or something yeah um, so you know synthesizer perhaps but that's can be so many things so but yeah there's oh uh bells bells oh my gosh yes of course general bells yeah um yeah i think that's a pretty good pretty good pretty good list um 
So I think like for I, I Glockenspiel vibraphone like here we have here we have Glockenspiel vibraphone the artificial harmonics we have celeste absolutely we have harp and I think also sorry brass players I think also like absence of brass <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to say absence of brass and maybe timpani. <laughs> um, and here, this check, this hits like a lot of those points. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Brass magic, that would be something you'd have more like in Sorcerer's Apprentice. With I can, and okay, okay. So, different type of yeah. feeling. Um, but... <laughs> forgot where I was going with that, but I just <laughs> wanted to um, do that because here it, it's like almost all the stops are pulled out. It, we have all, we have yeah. many magic, um, magical things. This is a clearly, uh, it's evoking something pretty clear than perhaps if we're in the middle of an action cue and then hear a little bit of a hint of a celeste, that can be like a hint towards something while right. not you know, as an addition to whatever the main event is, but here the magic is the main event. Um, yeah. <laughs> Always in motion is the future. That's so abrupt. And then we, well, we, it's great that you mentioned absence of brass because as soon as that emotional change happens, bum, bum, this descending brass yep, contrasts totally. it. Yep. Brass, oh, you're always so abrupt. No, I'm just kidding. That's not the takeaway. Um, let's hear that transition again. I feel like also there's a cut that shaves off like part of a beat too. But let's hear again. Okay. Always in motion is the future. Actually, let me go back more so we can get a sense of the tempo. Difficult to see. Always in motion is the future. There. You kind of, what do you think? It's kind of cut off a little bit. A little. <laughs> yeah. I. They were in pain. It is the future you see. Future. Two, three, four. Yeah, Will they die? Difficult to see. Always in motion is the future. Here. It's actually not when the yeah. brass enter. It's like two right. bars after. Um, but you hear that. Yes. Okay. Good. Not just me. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, what happened there? Is, was that a cut? Was that a... Let's see, let's see if that's on the soundtrack. Um because it feels like a in a mistake in a mistakey way, which has happened earlier in the film too. Not in a mistakey way, you know what I mean. Right. Okay. Oh, see there, it's fine. There, I feel like it's fine. Mm. Like. I'll count the beats, okay. One, two, two, three. Kind of. It's like the second one of those brass notes is longer than the first one. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel rushed going to the next section. And so Maybe. now let's hear this. Difficult to see. Always in motion is the future. Right there. Indeedy. It sounds like it sounds like the attack is cut off. I think it's the end of the next mm. envelope that is cut off. I think. Okay. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'd have to look into it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to... Let's see. This is going on my list of notes for Chris Malone. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is this cool? Okay. Three minutes. Is the, is the attack cut off? Yeah, the neck uh, envelope cut off. 
stuff. Okay. Um, cool. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess we can just continue going on yeah. our business and pretending like that was not really abrupt. It's fine. Um, okay. I've got to go to them. Decide you must. But to serve them best. If you leave now, help them you could, but you will destroy all for which they have fought. And Things so get somber. Or yep. not somber. Like the the mood really takes a turn. Yes, yeah, so we have that um, in the the harp. the The notes are going down, da da da, and then they repeat, but they repeat a half step lower. Yeah. So they're... So if that's a very like um yeah, it's a very chromatic like slide. Um mm -hmm. and it just goes back and forth. It doesn't like have a further destination or right. at least not immediately. It is sort of like the vamp, it's sort of like the ominous vamp for the back for the background of Yoda's warning. Um yeah, it's very, it's very evocative. And I think also the fact that like something crystallizes in the harmony there that isn't crystallized really so clearly before. I mean, it's not that it's not, it's, it's just so much more clear here. Triads wise, mm -hmm. you know, it's, these are not open chords, <laughs> whatever, you know, these are defined minor chords separated by only a half step. So they're, you know, chromatically, um, related. It's, um, yeah, there's, there's a huge emphasis on that minor second interval. And I think that's where a lot of the, the tension comes from because you have the minor chords themselves that are moving down by a minor second and then up a minor second, but then the melodic dun, dun, dun has that half step mm -hmm. as well. So. Yeah, and sort of the, I'm going to go up. Uh, like even this, this half step and then this augmented second, second. And then. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I think we also have, um, I mean, we have more uh, tremolo, we have, um, the strings are, at least the violins, are largely sort of staying in one place. So the movement is, the movement in the harp is kind of really allowed to shine through, which doesn't always happen if you just mm -hmm. have a harp plucking single quarter notes. It's, you're not always going to hear, that. You, you, you're not going to hear that unless you intentionally um, set aside other motion in the rest of the orchestra. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and the tempo here is just really plottingly slow. Like it is just, you can hear every single quarter note of that harp coming through. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. Decide you must, but to serve them best. If you leave now, help them you could, but you will destroy all for which they have fought and suffered. Oh my gosh, those trumpets. <laughs> They're so, um, I don't normally, I don't often say this about trumpets in Star Wars, but they have like a plush sound to me right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, they're, it, it's like a written out glissando. Like they're, they have a rhythm, but it's all just going down, you know, stepwise. And it's, um, that same, you know, uh, sextuplet type rhythm again. Yeah. Uh, Whatever. Right. Yeah. It kind of hurts my soul a little bit that you said that there it's like a written out glissando, Jeremy. I don't you know. Kinda... <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> like it's a chromat descending chromatic line. Uh, it is. <laughs> but but I, I get that on a piano, the like, okay, that was, that it would almost, I, I get that on certain instruments that a, gliss, a glissando would have the, that those st stopping points mm -hmm. at each of the chromatic note, each of the notes in the chromatic scale. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's just interesting. I never would have, I never would have thought of that as a, as re remotely like a glissando, but like you're, you're not wrong in, in certain contexts for certain instruments. Right. <laughs> but yeah, well, no. It, <laughs> if, if you if you asked a trumpet to do an actual glissando or portamento, um, it, it would sound very much like a slide. It wouldn't sound like this. Yeah, so. it would be more like... Not, right. ugh, let me tell you, it's a lot harder to do a chromatic descending, like, you know, it's a lot harder to do a legit chromatic ascending and descending if you have an instrument that doesn't have those natural um, fixed pitches. But anyway, it, this is the descending, um, I think it's related to the cast, I think it's related to the cascading trumpet lines as, okay. as mentioned in Frank Lehman's catalog, but it's, it's not like exactly, it's just, um, I'll put it on screen. I'll, I'll put on screen what I, I mean, okay, it's not exactly it at all, but there are a lot of, um, descending, parallel triadic trumpet lines in Star Wars. So this is... Yes. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, this isn't like the entire incidental motif, but still, this this type of gesture is uh, something that is very much in John Williams's back pocket and used a lot. And it's not just the one line, like... It's that it's in parallel it, it's it's that it's in thirds um yeah but anyway they sound plush to me um as, yeah like not like a sharp attack as, yeah as we're talking about this i i think there's a similar uh moment it in maybe the phantom menace when they're in coruscant that's very similar to this in terms of this particular figure I don't know, I'd have You're to go back and look right. at it. But it, it sounds like something that was used later on mm. in another movie as well. So. Oh. Okay. Can't confirm or deny know. on the it, spot, but your are <laughs> No, I'd have to look into it. Um, like, for some reason, it really evokes the image of a ship landing. It really does. And I, for, yeah. Yeah. Dominic Sewell, hit us <laughs> up in the comments. I know you know this. You definitely know this. Um, yeah, the it's. I think there's a supercut somewhere on YouTube of all of the. Is it all of the like landing the ship landing fanfares in Star Wars? Like they kind of like have their own type of like. Sh there's like sh I don't know. There there are. I may, may have made this up, but I think there are just like <laughs> there are certain types of fanfares that accompany ships landing or taking mm -hmm. off, and. Um, if I find that supercut, I'll put it in the show notes, but yeah, which I never, I, until I saw it framed in that way, I'm, the more I talk about it, the more I think this does exist on YouTube somewhere. Um, okay. I never would have made the connection between like fanfares accompanying specifically ship landings. I don't know mm -hmm. why. I just, I don't know why, but I think ships in Star Wars have been one of those things that go over my head or... I guess it's easy to just, it's easy to take for granted just going portal to portal, like just arriving and uh, I don't know, ships just taking off. Like, you know, I don't have a fanfare when I get in my car. <laughs> like, maybe I should. What do you mean you don't? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need a fanfare. Um, there should be fanfares for people getting on like the train or the bus or something, encourage public transportation. That could be like a dopamine, like reward what's it called? Like, um, reinforcement, Pos it could be like positive reinforcement to, to use alternative transportation. No, this is an idea. This is an idea for when I never implement it anywhere. Okay. Um, let's continue. <laughs>
<laughs> no, I don't have a landing permit. I'm trying to reach Lando Calrissian. <laughs> His, his voice there is just, I'm trying to reach, um, and landing and Lando, I don't know, wonder if that's how they came up with Lando's name. Um, Possibly. <laughs> we should name a character. Landing Calvary is in? No, Lando. Okay, sold. <laughs> Force. Rather touchy, aren't they? I thought you knew this person. And we hear that ascending, that really, that high pitched, like ascending flute line. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, after Leia. Oh, wait, wait a minute, let me explain. You will not deviate from your present course. Rather touchy, aren't they? I thought you knew this person. <laughs> Chewie oh, is not having this. Okay, we've arrived at the best moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the best moment of this set of minutes um, because we have a very awesome violin section solely. And a solely is, let me just write this on screen. Okay, a solo is when one person on one instrument plays something like you know a solo I think everyone knows what a solo is right a soli with spelled with an i at the end is when it's for the a solo for the whole section um so here it's a vi it's like a spotlight on a section basically and so here we have mm -hmm. a violin soli um it's actually technically I think I it would you could say it's a string soli but it's um it means all of the strings are playing, or all the violins are playing this together, and it's the spotlight. It's not just one solo player. Um, oh my gosh, uh, I'm almost hesitant to get to it because it's just so exciting for me. But I'll do, I'll do it. Okay, I'll play through it so that you can hear it first, and I won't, and I won't interrupt. I'm a touchy, aren't they? I thought you knew this person. Well, that was a long time ago. I'm sure he's forgotten about that. Land on platform 327. Thank you. There's nothing to worry about. We go way back, Land. Who's worried? Great line. Oh my gosh, and now the choir is entering. We have to stop. Okay, there's too there's so much happening. Um this is what I was referring to, by the way, when I said that there's a part here that actually feels kind of sci-fi-y. And it's okay. when the choir enters, for me, that does it. Mm. Um, so we're just starting to get to that part. And I don't really know why. It just, it just is. Mm. Um, yeah. So what are your thoughts, observations about, about this so far? Um, so the solely, like all of the upper strings are playing the same thing. My first observation is that's a lot of strings. That's a yeah. lot of people playing that melody. I don't know what the actual size is, but I'm going to guess that there's probably around 25 or 30 people all playing the same thing, which is gives you that really upfront sound. But this is also a very uh, classical Hollywood scoring technique. Um, Alfred Newman would use this a type of putting all the strings uh, in unison or in parallel octaves to bring a melody forward and that was part of his signature sound um for classic hollywood film scores and in fact we do have the violas in a in a parallel in an octave um as well so we have so i i looked up in in chris malone's um recording the star wars saga um at least in for one of the films the it says 26 violins 10 violas so yeah that would be like 26 violins on this top line um and then 10 violas would be 
an octave lower, so. So yeah, that would be, you're stacking this, you're, you're stacking this melody up. Right. Um, as opposed to how usually, um, I don't know how clearly I've maybe made this distinction on the podcast before, but usually like 26 violins in an orchestra, that those 26 violins would not usually be playing the same part. It's the violins are split up into first violin and second violin. So putting, so you have like two sections of violins at your disposal to, um, to give two separate, you know, parts to, um, unifying them at all at once is a common Hollywood scoring technique, especially, I'm not going to say that. Um, but <laughs> in Star Wars, it, it's not so common to have just the violence right. all doubling each other. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this, um, this thing that we're hearing in the background that, that also is like uh, sex toplets um, is the Cloud City, I believe it's what Frank Lehman calls Cloud City 2 theme, Trouble in Bespin. And... I feel like it's related to the Boba Fett theme as I, mm -hmm. I discussed this two episodes ago. But I mean, I feel it has the same like rhythmic impulse to it. Yeah. Um, and that sort of being underneath this really soaring string line makes this feel so creepy. But not in a, not in a Palpatine creepy, more like in a... In, in the way that Cloud City is creepy, which is that it's it's seedy, it looks, there's shady stuff going on, um, but on top, appearances look really nice. Um, and that's sort of what I think of when I think of Cloud City is like, things look beautiful, but things are not okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's continue. Well, no, let's let's go to the soundtrack. <laughs> okay. um, there are several layers that we haven't discussed. Okay. And also, I'll 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 play something that that's usually compared to. There's the plush trumpets. Do you hear that sort of Imperial March foreshadowing? Yep. Dee, dee, dee. It's busy. Yeah. See, we have that magic, that harp doing kind of a, uh, like a glissando up, down and up, giving it this sort of flourishy, like gilded quality. Um, yeah, like Lando with his capes or something. Oh my gosh. So sci-fi. It ends in an unexpected place. I expect it to mm -hmm. go dee dee, but it goes dee dee. Um, oh my gosh, it's so sci-fi. Do you know what I, does, does anyone else <laughs> feel that way? Or is it, I don't know, it feels so sci-fi to me. Um, well, what are the, what's the, the scale in the melody? Like there's, or the underlying harmony here. 
might that be giving some of the sci-fi element to it? Oh, interesting. Um, well, I feel it specifically when the vocals come in. Okay. Um, I assume, okay, here's, it sounds 70s. It sounds 70s sci-fi to me. <laughs> maybe maybe 80s. I don't, I don't really know. But I don't even have a point of reference. I don't have a clear point of reference for that. It's just, I think, I must have an association from something. I, I know, I'm, I'm, surely I've seen sci-fi in the 70s or 80s or something in that era. I'm sure I have. I just, maybe it's just in the, maybe it's been parodied like that as well. I, I don't know. Something about the singing mm. also reminds you of Star Trek, but I've never seen a Star Trek, so I don't know why I think this. Oh but, my gosh, I'm making assumptions left and right. But that was the harmony, be my maybe. first my first question of um, you know, is are you recalling something from maybe 2001 or from Star Trek the Motion Picture? So I've never seen Star Trek the Motion Picture and I've seen 2001, but it was so long ago and I don't what was there a choir like that in 2001? Um I, there is choir in Ligeti's uh Lux Eterna. Right, okay. That's used in the soundtrack, but I, yeah, uh, that's probably not what you're thinking of. So I'm not sure what you're referring to, but you said, yeah. oh, this sounds like 70s sci fi. It's like, if Star Wars, it's 70s sci fi. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, I have. What it, what it reminds me of mm -hmm. is in terms of like the, the overall sound at this moment, um, it reminds me of in The Phantom Menace when they're uh, going underwater and seeing the city for the first time. What? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, actually, I, I do. There are parts of it. There are certain yeah. bars where, where, not the whole... Not the whole thing, just the, the overall sound. Yeah. The overall sound. Just the sound. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, I don't... I hear it in uh, the harmony in a couple places, but I don't... Certainly the Odaganga swimming stuff has voices forward, of course. That's what you mean. You're talking about the voices part more, more mostly. Yeah. Um, that feels like, okay, in The Phantom Venice, it feels like the voices are not as, here it sounds like the voices are purely here to be chords. Mm -hmm. to be really, like, dramatic chords. In The Phantom Menace, I feel like they're, like, chords. They're, the voices are maybe, I don't know, the chords and vibes. Here, okay, here, here's maybe another thing. Here there's so much vibrato. And I think that is one of the things that is making those two uses of choir feel distinct to me and perhaps what makes mm -hmm. this feel... Sci-fi. I don't know why. Maybe the maybe the vibrato makes me ha like associate that with theremin or something. But the vibrato mm, here is yeah. so. It's multo. It's like multo vibrato. Um, vibrato is just a vib a vibration in the in the in the note, like um, you know, verses. So, like in a lot of times when we hear voices in Star Wars, like do, 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 it's senza vibrato. So it's without vibrato. Right. It's a straight tone. But here it's like, oh, like, you know, it's super um, undulating notes. Um, yeah, like extremely so. Um, mm. Yeah, I guess. I guess, um, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> well, no, we'll know. I just, um, I guess I could find a, I could find the track where, let's see. I'm trying to skip to the Oda Gunga part. Sure. Okay, here. Yeah. Okay. The voices, I think, I don't think they're sense of vibrato in 
the Phantom Menace, but they're mixed more in the background. They're and with more reverb. Right. So yes, a lot. They feel less present. Where here, when the voices come in, it's like it. They it feels like they put the choir in front of the orchestra. Almost, mm. or at least like really close. It's not just the sort of the Odagon, the swim to Odaganga reminds me more of stuff from Harry Potter, I think. Interesting. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I guess it's worth saying this is the first vocal, this is the first like choir. Yeah, this is the first yeah. use of choir in Star Wars. Yeah, so here it is. <laughs> The rest of the ones, the subsequent ones, are nothing like this. So, right. Uh, yeah, it is quite. It's quite striking. Okay, so the thing it's been uh, mentioned in a previous episode, but I don't think I played an example. Um, the violin theme that we hear in Cloud City, the. is often compared to Sibelius Violin Concerto. Oh. And um, so I am going to actually just play a little bit from the beginning of Sibelius Violin Concerto so you can hear where this, um, the idea of this comparison comes in. And also in a previous episode, in Frank Lehman's episode, I, I did play examples of um, the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto and compared that to Han and Leia's theme. And that's another frequently compared um, you know, set of pieces. And in that one, I, I, both of us sort of felt like, I don't know, we didn't really hear it as being that similar. But in this case, with the Sibelius, um, I definitely hear it more. So, okay. All right. This is um a this is from a performance uh, given by Ven uh, Maxime Vengarov. Okay, let me let me scoot back a little bit. Oh my gosh, sorry. Okay, usually the beginning of live performances start with like a minute of clapping, so. Takes it at a really slow pace. Okay, I probably played a little bit further than I needed to, <laughs> but uh, it, I think the sound of like a solo violin playing above like a relatively static bed like that is just such a captivating sound um mm -hmm. so yeah there are definitely some there are definitely similarities in um well, are you familiar with that piece jeremy with the sibelius yeah one? i'm not as familiar with that one um what you said about the tchaikovsky violin concerto uh and the hanalea though i I think there's a strong connection there. Oh, okay. You know, okay. I, I hear it I hear it very strong. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. Yeah. So Okay, yeah. I guess that's interesting. Um so at for the not you know, if this were for someone who doesn't have this concerto like burned into their brain, <laughs> in your first listen, did you hear a similarity? I heard a little bit of similarity, but not a fair lot. Fair enough. Yeah, fair so. enough. Um, it started to get interesting right when you stopped, and that's okay. where I was like, "Oh, is that is that where it's trying to oh, uh, line up?" But yeah, I can see a little bit of similarity, but I feel a lot more resonance with the um, Tchaikovsky and oh, okay. the solo and the princess theme. So. Interesting. Well, the okay, yeah, the Tchaikovsky one is like because Han and Leia goes. And Tchaikovsky goes, whatever. Um, 
So like the intervals. All of those notes are the same. Um, right. Okay, so in this one, I've 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 written out the top one is this is, is Sibelius, and this is the Cloud City. Um, and so, let's see. Um, the parts that I feel like have a connection are first here we have this perfect fifth leap down, right? And then yeah. here we have a, um, in the Sibelius it goes, perfect fifth down. And then here we have a minor third up. And then in Cloud City, and then here a minor third up. So this is like in a different key, right? Mm -hmm. So this dee -dee 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 is like this exactly pretty much because the trill is, it's really just like a turn. Like it's similar mm -hmm. to just what the triplet is. Um, so yeah, that's the, I think that's what people are responding to. And I think also just simply the fact that it's a violin spotlight if, I think if that theme were maybe on a different instrument, maybe it wouldn't be something that people would so readily associate with the Sibelius Violin Concerto. Because I also hear lots of similar, like I could also make a case for it reminding me of Scheherazade or just, I don't know, a lot of, I don't know, I could make m more comparisons harmony-wise with other pieces, I'm sure, but it's right there. It's violins, so I'm thinking Violin Concerto. It, it definitely has... Um recalls some Eastern European violin music. And I think part of that is that um, da, 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 that minor second. Yeah. Like you have the, it's going up a minor second, it's going down a minor second, so. Yeah, because it could go, like if we simplified it. But no, it adds like a little ornament. Where... Right. We're functionally the, like, if you really wanted to simplify this, you know, like how they make like easy piano books or easy violin books and they kind of take out the, all the details and they just give you the main notes to hit. I could see them taking that out for the super easy version. Right. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. It, I don't know. I don't know if it sounds like Eastern European music. I think it sounds like European music that is trying to emulate the Orient. Okay. <laughs> um, or the Middle East or, or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's it's, I yeah, I, I, I hear it a little bit differently. I hear it as actually, you know, um, like Hungarian or Russian type of music rather than Western composer trying to imitate, you know, music of the Orient. Um, but yeah, it's all up for interpretation, personal mm. experience. I think I think another th I think one of the things that makes also makes me think of Eastern or sorry, yeah, Eastern um, depiction musical depictions of sorry, Western musical depictions of the East, um, which if people are familiar with like Said. Um, and just Orientalism, the, we have the, there's like the Orient and the Occident. So this would be like the Occident uh, writing the Orient or or, or whatnot. Um, I think the siren quality of like having a solo line do that, like a solo violin or like voices, sort of like the exotic quality of of that feels kind of also in line with how the East has been portrayed in like classical music. Mm. Um, yeah, just sort of like a siren, <laughs> like a tempting, you know, something like, something like that. And yeah, this whole thing feels tempting, tempting us to Cloud City. <laughs> I think one thing that is worth noting is and I and I've, I mentioned this a couple times when we were when we were uh, playing the recording is just how busy the background is. Like 
In the Sibelius Violin Concerto, it's not that way. It's The orchestra is so soft in the background. They're just accompaniment. Okay, maybe that new AI can even make that accompaniment up. <laughs> if you're, <laughs> the violin is playing, you just... Um, uh, but in the Cloud City, in, in Cloud City, that is certainly not the case. It is... Lord. Okay. We have a bunch of different ostinatos. Mm. The cellos are doing these fast arpeggios this whole time too. You can barely hear them. You can't really hear the individual notes clear, clearly, but it, it's like a wall of sound, I think is what I'm maybe getting at, is like, it's, it's, it's a wall of things, of, of things happening quickly. Um, yeah, instead of playing the chords, like, um, it's like, it's just so much activity. Um, yeah. It's, and then, of course, that persistent, and now adding even more. It's like maximalist. Oh my gosh. Descending bassoon line. This is the end of the cue. Oh my gosh, it's such, <laughs> I love this cue. Um, okay, yeah. We're not quite at the end of the minutes. <laughs> Anything you want to jump in and say? Um, the only thing I want, you were talking about, the busyness in there, um, it's, you know, the notes aren't as important in that. It's the texture mm -hmm. of what's going on, trying to, you know, so you know, it, it keeps um, adding more and more things at you, you know, to try to up the tension. Um, but those, there's so much going on. You can hear a little bit in the brass with those uh, tuplets yeah. again. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. So that's actually kind of difficult to do, especially on the mid and lower brass, to do all of that triple tonguing. Oh, I would not want to play that passage. <laughs> Trumpet, you, it's easier. Because you play trombone. Trombone, yeah. So... That's a little tricky because it's a lower instrument. So we're not as um, agile. agile. <laughs> um, yeah, and I guess we can see in the spectrogram that you took a, a snapshot of that at this point we would be, let's see, this is the min minute, if this is minute zero. Oh my gosh, what is this pen that I'm using? Holy crap. Okay, if this is like, the beginning right this is minutes this is the beginning of the minutes and this mm -hmm. is like the end right now we're about we're almost we're, we're like here we're in this busy spot <laughs> right yeah you can and you you can see you can see how like i guess you see it in the amount of vertical space occupied within well this is left and right channels but um mm -hmm. you see how much of this has color in it, which is, which means like all the different frequency, um, you know, band bands or whatever it's, we have notes that are happening low, not only notes, but sounds as well. Um, but also we see like 
this color is kind of saturated. So like here we have a tiny, we have like tiny spots of color, but here we have like, here it's more um, saturated. And mm. that is um, the level of, I don't know if saturation is the right word. The level of color saturation is often one of the, um, I, I don't know one of the axes, one of the axes, one of the one of the ways. So it's important in a spectrogram. It 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 says something. It says the it, the amount. Right. It's the it's the amplitude or the level. So the x axis is time, right? Mm -hmm. The y axis is frequency. frequency, and then the color is how you encode the the level of that frequency at that Which time. Just amplitude. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. should I, oh yeah. Should I put it back up? Uh, show the, um, the, since we're speaking of spectrograms, um, the one for R2. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. That was cool. I'll find it. All right. Um, here we go. Yeah. So I'd never looked at a spectrogram of what the R2 sounds look like and there's a lot going on here. So. Yeah. Well, it's nice how clearly we can like see a pattern, which we can't always, spectrograms don't always look like, oh, clear signs. It kind of looks right. like a lot of noise <laughs> a lot of the time. Um, so yeah, let me actually find that where this is. It's 135.27. Okay. I'll, I'll play this so that we can hear it in context. Um, Here we go. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yep. So I wish I could easily slow that down. Well, do you want to explain um, certain things and I'll try to highlight along with you? Okay. So, um, oops. Yeah. <laughs> well, at at the beginning, you see these um, you see these lines that are in parallel and they're curving down. Yeah, those. So the that's whiskers. called yeah. That's actually called a chirp, um, and it's just you know having that particular waveform just turning it you know like a like a glissando just going down real quick. Um, so that, that's the first thing that I know. So that's the very first thing you hear is that you. The yeah. sounds, yeah. Do, do, do. Well, let's, <laughs> let's hear at the very beginning of that now. Sure. Okay. It was before the, it, yeah, it was just that first one. Right. Uh -huh. the, the next three blocks look to me like, they almost look like uh, vowels. So there's some sort of sound that's creating that beat, but it has a lot of harmonic content in it. Do you want to, do you want to explain what you mean by look like? Are you talking about formants? Do you want to yes, talk yes, about they, how they, they look? Yeah, okay. Yeah, they look like formants. They look like uh, someone's talking. And I know that when they did the sound design for R2-D2, I believe they mixed in some actual vocalization. So that yes. could be what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Um. And then we have this very interesting up and down shape. That's literally just a sweep up and sweep down of like a sine wave. So you don't see any additional harmonics. It's just woo. -hoo. Yeah, right. it's very fast. It, it's extremely fast. And that, that's the thing, like all of these small sounds are happening in very quick succession. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know there was so much going on as I actually saw this for the first time. Then we see a couple more of those. Well, first beats. I want to say that like you can you can hear it in the recording that it doesn't just go up and down. It goes up and then down starting from here. Right. So it's like there's a little bit of a hitch. It's not like ooh. ooh. It's like ooh, ooh. Right. Um, so let's hear that. Yeah. Okay, continue. 
And then, and then you have a couple more of those beep vowel-like sounds. Yeah. And then uh, at the end of it, uh, you have these uh, pure frequencies right there. That do, 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 do. Um, you could probably transcribe that as a melody, <laughs> but yeah, it it looks like um, what you in synthesis would call a sample and hold. So it holds a particular it has a particular frequency and holds that for basically a random time, then moves on to the next one, and then moves on to the next one. So there's some sort of randomness going on there, but it's also a very pure tone. Yeah, would you say it's like almost like a sign? Yes, I would say that those are sign or very close to sine waves because yeah. you don't see the, the overtones. Right. Yeah, and because and we do see other noise, but that's because we're watching it in the context of other stuff going on. Exactly. Yes. Um, yep. It was those beeps, which have a very <laughs> clear, yeah, they have a very clear pitch to them. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Thank you for doing that. that that's so, an awesome visual. Um, you're welcome. Yeah. So that was the chirp down, the three beeps, um, the sample and hold. <laughs> the sample, well, I didn't write them all, but the chirp down, the three beeps, the up and down right. sweep, three more beeps, again, like the vowel types of things. And then the sample and hold sound is those, um, those clear pitches at the end. That's cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I was very surprised to see the level of complexity into making that sound. And it's nice that, um, well, I wish we could have, I would like to see a spectrogram of all of the R2 beeps. I mean, all of the droid sounds, to be honest. But it is, it can be tricky to isolate them sometimes. Like, we often hear R2 mixed with lots of other sounds at the same time and music. Right. So here, it, it, a nice opportunity to um, have a more quiet. And I know that I wasn't even playing from the voice removed version, um, but yeah, it would be nice. Um, I kind of want to play a little bit from the voice removed version now. Sure. I okay. want to hear the violin part. Okay. And I want to hear what it does to the Cloud City voices. <laughs> I already know. Sounds wild. It is interesting. The in I mean, obviously, it's going to cut out cut out instruments that cross into a certain range. Mm -hmm. Okay, here. When the violin goes down to that F, it's not safe there anymore. It's safe when it's like super high though. Right. <laughs> That's wild, it like took out the choir. It effectively removed the voices. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it did a really good job of removing the voices. I'm actually very impressed with yeah, I, how little. Too. Yeah. I thought that it would, before listening to it, I thought that the choir would perhaps be preserved a little bit more just because that kind of singing is so different than like speaking. Mm -hmm. It sounds so different. Um, but yeah, I guess it can still tell a voice. The voice is a voice. Um, <laughs> plus I will say that a lot of the time, well, there are the top line of the vocals, doo -doo -doo, like the top line is probably most audible to people, but 
there are harmonies happening. Like there, it's fully stacked chords. So there are people singing lo lower than that too. Um, and in a, in a range that actually would cross over to, you know, speech or a lot of people's um, speech. Right. Um, yeah. It's wild sometimes that like, sp like speaking and singing sound totally different, but then I'm frequently surprised by how similar they can, they can be like pitch, pitch ranges and, and whatever. Um, mm -hmm. like, like, I think we think of like songs or whatever as having like much bigger vocal range, but a lot of songs will not really go past a, a perfect fifth. Like it's right. to have a melody in a song actually span like an octave. It's not really like, at least in like sort of the most music that not, I guess not like opera or something, but yeah. Um, okay. Now we have just like a little bit left of these minutes. Okay. So we're seeing cloud, a twin cloud car. They've landed. Oh, we hear that ship going by. Doppler effect. I don't like this. Okay, that's the end of the minutes. That's a nice <laughs> little Doppler. Um, heard that in my right ear. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of the traffic of the traffic of the speeding speeders or whatever it's the speeding cars, space cars. Um, but yeah, that's the end of these minutes. Three PO and Leia get the last words. <laughs> they Do you have any? I don't like this. No. Yeah, I don't like this. <laughs> that's what no she one says. to meet us. <laughs> um, yeah, three PO has been like, what did he say before? He was like, rather touchy, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, no one to meet us. So do you have any, um, thoughts, any final sort of things that we didn't talk about? No, I, I think we covered, uh, quite a lot. There's a lot going on here in terms of the sound design and the music and how, it, you know, matching the action on screen and all those emotional shifts. There's just... You know, I didn't know what to expect from these five minutes because you just gave them to me randomly. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot in here. And I think we covered pretty much all of it thoroughly. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I encourage listeners to watch the cor corresponding video from Dominic Sewell's channel that will be coming out probably around this time um, where he, he will do an analysis of... 8M2, City in the Clouds. So he's been doing Empire Strikes Back at the same time as this podcast and focusing one cue at a time rather than like five minutes at a time. So yeah, link to that will be in the show notes. But um, yeah, I guess my final thought is I have been really excited about this um, this Cloud City music because it I think it is some of the music that I remembered the least in all of Star mm. Wars. Um, and it's super like... I'm. I'm I'm really glad to have rectified that uh, now. And that violin part is so, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> More violin solis, um, <laughs> please. <laughs> um, yeah. So are you ready to take the Star Wars Music Minute questionnaire for the third time? I'll try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Do you want to know your old answers first? No. Okay. I'll just All right. start fresh. <laughs> All right. Question number one, in exactly three words, what does Star Wars sound like? Um, space? Um, brass? <laughs> and droids. 
go with that. Ooh, nice. <laughs> no violins. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that actually that sums up quite a bit. Space brass yeah. droids. Yeah, for sure. That, that, that's Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, question number two: What is something related to Star Wars music or sound that you're curious about or want to learn more about? Um, I'd say at this point, you know, learning more about the sound effects and the sound design, uh, it's something that I haven't paid a lot of attention to, uh, because I've been mostly viewing this from a compositional standpoint, but now that I've seen, you know, through these minutes, um, some of the stuff I'd like to learn more about how it was created, especially, um, since I have sample libraries on my computer of the ARP 2600, you know, can I recreate some of these sounds would be interesting. Mm, nice. Um, well, I'm, if you do recreate them, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to know what your old answers were, by the way? I, I'm fine. I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right, listeners, if you're curious what his old answers were, I'll put those in the show notes. He can't hide. Ooh, suspense. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Question number three. What is a score or soundtrack that you're fond of besides anything Star Wars? It's not Star Wars. Um, it's interesting because the first thing that came to my mind was something that's Star Wars. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything more recent because I know I've given answers in the past on some uh, scores from, you know, that are older um, more contemporary. You you made it hard by saying and not Star. <laughs> um, I, I still. Were you going to say something new, Star Wars? I was going to actually say can, Andor. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, it doesn't I, count, I actually, but I but I am interested to know. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I like that one. I'm still trying to think of something um, recent that I'm even trying to think like what films I've seen that were recent. Um, yeah, it, it's difficult to keep up with <laughs> <laughs> so much. Um, yeah. What? Well, what movies have you watched? Well, I know that we watched, we watched Glass we watch? Onion. We watched oh, Glass we Onion, watch on, Glass Onion on Discord. Yeah, that was, that was, your okay, previous like answers it, have been Star Trek, yep. Wally, North by Northwest, mm -hmm. Loki. So that's kind of new. Loki is a and, phenomenal soundtrack. Yeah. And Catch Me If You Can. Catch Me by If John You Can. Um, we'll add The Matrix. Oh, okay. Uh, Don Davis. That is a unique uh, soundtrack for sure. Um, and why not? We'll add all the music from Bob's Burgers. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Who's the composer? I think uh, one of the composers is actually the show creator, Lauren Bouchard, uh, but don't quote me on that. Okay. You may have just done I'll the look, theme. I'll look it up, put the, put the right person. But but it's it's an animated sitcom, mm -hmm. but it's there's, so, there's a musical number like every show, and it's just always great, and the lyrics are hilarious. <laughs> that's interesting. I think that's a, I think that's a new answer, actually. Huh. So. Cool. Uh, well, thank you for that. Um, sure. Where can people find you online and your stuff? I know you have a SoundCloud. I have a SoundCloud, uh, soundcloud.com slash jsaruk, J-S-A-W-R-U-K. Um, I'm on Instagram, I think, but my composer 314. I, well, I, I know I'm on Instagram, um, but I'm trying to remember what my... Uh, thing is, it's probably Composer 314. If you see a Composer 314 or a JSR online, it's probably me. Okay. I'll, just, <laughs> so. I'll put links in the show notes. Um, cool. Well, thank you very much for coming back on the show. Um, thank you. It's been awesome talking about these these minutes with you. Um, and yeah, I, I really appreciated your, your visual aids. Very exciting. <laughs> very exciting to have those. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for having me. This was great. Um, yeah, wow, we did it under two and a half hours. I'm proud of us. <gasps> okay. Um, well, listeners, you can um, you can find Star Wars Music Minute online and and in on 
various in various places. I don't know, not all of the places at this point. There are too many of them. But um, if you have a really detailed question, you can always either leave a comment on YouTube or you could email me directly at podcast at Star Wars Music Minute dot com. I have gotten some really good questions this season that I will address later. But um, yeah, that is always an option. And with that, uh, next week, I'll be talking about minutes 81 through 85 of The Empire Strikes Back. May the force be with you. Uh, Talk to you next week on Star Wars Music Minute.